Hello, everyone. I'm Dana Perino, along with Brian Kilmeade, Donna Brazil, Jesse Waters, and Greg Gutfeld. It's 5 o'clock in New York City, and this is The Five. <laughs> This is a Fox News alert. Breaking news rocking Washington, D.C. as two key senators will vote yes to confirm Brett Kavanaugh. Republican Senator Susan Collins of Maine and Democratic Senator Joe Manchin from West Virginia announcing their decisions just moments ago. Here's a little portion of Senator Collins' speech on the Senate floor. Oh, really? I do not believe that these charges can fairly prevent Judge Kavanaugh from serving on the court. To that leaker, who I hope is listening now, let me say that what you did was unconscionable. So that public confidence in our judiciary and our highest court is restored. Mr. President, I will vote to confirm Judge Kavanaugh. The final vote is now expected tomorrow in what could be Mitch McConnell's biggest win of his career. The White House responding to the news with this tweet from Press Secretary Sarah Sanders. Thank you, Senator Collins, for standing by your convictions and doing the right thing to confirm Judge Kavanaugh. Uh, I think all of us watched Susan Collins' speech. It was a big lead up to uh, quite a STEM winder, I think they used to call him, a big STEM winder. Um, Greg, it was an important speech, and I wondered what you thought of it. Well, okay, so uh, she started talking, and I started yawning, and I realized that I am missing something really huge because I'm not trained to hear it. We've, been, we've spent so much time with short, loud, almost Trumpian speeches all the time. This might have been the most important speech I've heard in years because she wasn't just defending Kavanaugh. She was defending our system. She was trying to preserve an institution. And she, she was like, you know, when you watch shows and they say, like, you know, previously on Dallas? She was like, previously in the government. She went from the beginning to the present time and took us through every bit of the resistance, every bit of his, his legal background, all of the allegations. She was a hammer of reason going through all of this stuff. And she brought us from the start to the finish, providing cover for everybody else. And again, she spoke not for Kavanaugh. She was speaking for us. And so I go to Twitter, right, because I see the other media who are like me, Making jokes about her, like making in their male reporters mocking her, and because she's like slow or she's 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 boring, and it's Methodical. like yeah, they made they made the same mistake I did, but they're even dumber than me for doing that. Mm -hmm. And I mean, they're they're making fun of a woman, an incredibly brave woman. What she did was brave. She's going to be harassed for the rest of her life. And she did, she um, decided to do it on the merits, right? So she's like, this wasn't a partisan decision for her. Jesse, but one on the merits. And it shouldn't have been this close. If you look at this, the media has been really complicit in spreading this disinformation campaign here. When you look at that letter that came out from Ford's boyfriend that raised all kinds of credibility issues for her, the media ignored that. The letter from the ex-boyfriend of Julie Swetnick, the Avenatti client, raised all sorts of questions about her credibility, her participating in some very unsavory things. I can't even say it on television. Her history of... Uh, of frivolous lawsuits and uh, restraining orders. And then they buried the Mitchell report that had riddled with great information from a, an experienced prosecutor. The media buried that. And the media never talked about all the witnesses alleged that couldn't corroborate the story from Ford. And there was an interesting polling question. And I think right now it was under 50% public support for the Kavanaugh confirmation. But when the respondent is asked, well, if you were told that all of the alleged witnesses couldn't corroborate Ford, it skyrockets to over 60 percent. And then still things are leaking out of the story. This friend of Ford allegedly trying to persuade or tamper with some of the witnesses' sworn statements, saying them to change their story. This woman's a former FBI agent. The woman allegedly was coached by Ford on how to take a polygraph test. This woman's being represented by a, a lawyer who left the Justice Department uh, in a huff over Trump's election, who oversaw the Hillary Clinton probe. Very sketchy stuff going on, and Grassley's now alluding to even more coordination between Ford and Ford's team and Dianne Feinstein and things like that. And Susan College mentioned these things in her floor speech to, today. She says these uh, antics by Feinstein didn't help. The Avenatti 
accusation definitely didn't help. And everything that these people do in the hallways isn't helping. And you got to look back at this thing after two weeks and say, the Democrats really overplayed their hand here. Did you think, Donna, given all of your experience, that I there can't was believe still... I sat here and listened to all of that without erupting in some <laughs> form of rage. Well, you're going to get a chance. <laughs> or, you're get a or, chance. Or, or began to show my explosive passion. <laughs> but then again, I'm not Judge Kavanaugh. I don't get a chance to cry and, and make it all up. And should and only women cry? Should only women cry? <laughs> That's very sexist to oh, make fun of a man well, for crying. First of all, I've never made fun of anybody crying. And by the <laughs> way, I've seen a lot of men cry in my life, and mm -hmm. most of the time it's, they've cried. I did that oh, once man. after one show. Okay, <laughs> one show. Yeah. You were really tough. You know, if I had tissue, I'd give it to you now because I can sing right now, you would cry. <laughs> Donna, I, I do wonder up until Susan Collins gave her speech, did you think there was a chance? that the Republicans might not be able to get this uh, confirmation done? You know, first of all, when it comes to uh, Senate nominations for judicial positions, the Republicans have only one speed, and that is go ahead and get it done. Uh, we saw with Merrick Garland waiting 10 months. He didn't get a hearing. It didn't happen. We saw with uh, Justice uh, Gorsuch. He got a hearing. They got it done. And three Democrats uh, walked across the aisle to support him. So, look. I am not going to sit here and belittle the women who have come forward. I'm not going to uh, try to bring back old conversations about their past because they're not uh, applying for a job, a lifetime position on the Supreme Court. Uh, Judge Kavanaugh should have expected that his life story, his life history would come up. We expect that when you run a candidate for president. We expect that. Sorry, I touch you. I'm not trying to do anything. <laughs> no, I like being touched. I'm okay. from an Italian family. We're always touching each other. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm yeah. part Irish. But, so no one does, but no one expects to be um, accused I mean, of gang rape. Accused, like, like, falsely accused or, or, of something. Leading up to the hearing, like you would, right. he knew that his background would be there, but you can't anticipate that you'll be falsely accused. You cannot, but you can anticipate that your past, your entire past, not just your recent past, will 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 come up in the matter of of not just hearings, but a matter of investigation. That being said, uh, this vote will likely happen within the next 22 hours. It appears that they have the votes. We don't know. I suggest people who are still upset. People still want to weigh in, call United States Senators 202 224 3121 because right. <laughs> it's not over. The ABA is now looking into uh, Judge Kavanaugh's app yeah. uh, appearance list. Right. Right. But they're not going to look into Avenetti. I would say this. Avenetti is. is Avenatti compare the two. But he uh, did not, he's not applying for a lifetime position. But, on he's, the but I mean, he sh not. should he be right. actually practicing so, law, Avenetti, we're not really after sure. what he did? Well, we know that he's got a great tanning deal because <laughs> he's constantly tanned. But we know Avenatti. Well, look who's uh, talking, baby. You look good. You got your tan. Thank you very much. I have makeup. Thank you. And I am getting back to being half. Italian. Uh, that's a gift. Now, a couple of things. The most powerful senator, I think, from here on in is Senator Joe Manchin. I mean, he's already shown he's not just somebody who says I'm anti, I'm pro gun and I'm anti Obamacare. This is for the, one of the first times he's had a major impactful vote as a so called moderate Democrat. And now he is wooable and you can't get mad at him. Wooable. Yeah, that's I it. love that. So word. who's going, who is so, wooing him? So put it Trump? this way it is well, such Donald a Trump narrow is... margin. It's oh, such a narrow yeah. margin on everything that if he's a Democrat, they will actually go across the aisle and vote on yeah. something consequential. He, hey, you can't be mad at him if you're a Democrat. But I would say this, if I can, Dana, just about this whole thing. I just want to mention, we just have a chance to talk about Joe Manchin in just a moment. So hold that thought. We're going to get to John Roberts. He's got some breaking news about him. But okay. go ahead and finish. I would just like to say this. Uh, that was one of the most comprehensive but necessary speeches that I can remember in quite some time. There were no enemies. There were no bad guys. The only bad guys was the leaker. We don't know. Feinstein, I know you would never do that. Uh, Ford, I know you were really hurt. Uh, uh, Kavanaugh, you've got a great record, and I know that wasn't you. So she went out of her way not to create any enemies. She's trying to do something, and I idealistically think it's possible. Yeah. She's trying to restart. She's trying to start fresh. Mm -hmm. And let's say the next thing is opioids. We make a big deal of it you just passed. Stuff that we can do together because I think we're staring at the cliff and nobody wants to jump, not Republicans or Democrats. So I think the next time you have me back here, it will probably be 2021. Mm -hmm. uh, you will have a situation <laughs> where people are making deals again. You we'll, won't be we'll back. We'll see. Um, speaking of Joe Manchin, the senator from West Virginia, our own John Roberts is at the White House, and I think you have some, you know, a little color, a little tidbit about what might have happened today. I, I do. First of all, uh, you know, to Brian's uh, point, uh, I think you could probably lay a pretty safe bet 
that yeah. President Trump, who's been campaigning heavily in West Virginia, may not right. make any more campaign appearances there between now and the 6th of November. Uh, we'll see, though. But clearly, Joe Manchin was a big part of this. And I am told, uh, let's put it this way. I, I talked to White House officials after the cloture vote, and I said, do you think you can hang on to Manchin? And they said, yeah, we're pretty sure we can hang on to Manchin. The reason for that optimism was that this morning, Senator Joe Manchin called the White House and said, that he was going to be a yes on the confirmation for uh, Brett Kavanaugh. So that's why uh, people around here were pretty happy today, thinking that this was going to go through. The, the one wild card, though, remained Maine Senator Susan Collins. Uh, she did not call the White House this morning to say that she would be a yes. White House officials told me they assumed if she was going to be a no, that uh, she would have called to inform them of that. But they learned of her decision in real time, just like the rest of us. Uh, they were hanging on every word she said, and, and we were here too. The way she laid out the judicial case for Judge Kavanaugh then seemed to pivot back a little bit on the allegations against him, but then pivoted back to the positive uh, again. And, and when, when she did that, we pretty much knew that she was going to be a yes on Kavanaugh. So at the moment, uh, with Senator Daines out of Montana for his daughter's uh, wedding, uh, you've got a 50-49 margin. If for some reason something were to happen, he could always come back. And I think it's a safe bet to say as well, the vice president will probably be around town just in case. Don't go anywhere. Jesse, did you have a quick question? No, I, had a, I had a comment. Is it a funny one? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it better be. No, yeah. I was only th saying if I were Joe Manchin, I would have held out for more. And here's why. <laughs> you remember Obamacare? Remember how they got that through? The Louisiana yeah. purchase? The, uh, what was Corn the Cornhusker Husk. kickback? I mean, wh what, what did he get? I mean, I'm just saying, Obama got that through with a lot of bribes and lies, and this got through, I guess, maybe lunch, maybe six, a promise six, not to campaign in Wheeling, West Virginia anymore. I'm just I, saying, I, the way I, the Senate I, works, it, he could have gotten more. I, well, I think that he did actually demand a piece of wedding cake from Senator Daines <laughs> when he comes back from Montana. But, you know, I've, and, and this is not to say that anything like this would happen, but you'll remember that uh, two years ago, Governor Jim Justice, who is a lifelong Democrat, switched his affiliation to the Republican yeah. Party. Uh, there have been a lot of people who have been tweeting me today saying they wouldn't be surprised to see Joe Manchin run as a uh, Republican in uh, 2024. 20, 2024, Four. yeah. <laughs> yeah it's a good thing we have Math Donna Brazil here because point. she knows that Senate calendar. Thank you very much, John Roberts. I you did want to ask you something, Donna. Um, uh, MoveOn.org and Priorities USA, two big yes. Democratic-leaning super PACs, have announced today they're pulling funding from Joe Manchin, who might, might not need it anymore in West Virginia anyway, but also pulling it from Phil Bredesen in Tennessee, who's in a tight race against Marsha Blackburn in Tennessee. I mean, isn't that, that wow. sort of like shooting yourself in the foot? Well, look, I don't know how much money they had committed to those candidates, but I can tell you Phil Bredesen is somebody who still has a shot at winning the United States Senate race. So I, I would advise them to continue to support him. All right. Greg, um, what about tone, tone here in terms of, like, Senator I heard, Collins? I heard Trump uh, actually said, thanks, Joe, and he said, don't mention it. <laughs> what do you, oh. Go ahead. No, that was a, that was a, uh, it's not Dana's so I, I tried to find a joke that would make a four-year-old laugh, yeah, and I think I even, I think I even failed. Right. Here's the thing that drives me I nuts, laugh. is that, <laughs> to, to Jesse's <laughs> point about witness tampering, the media, it's another blackout. That's a big, that's a big you, piece of this. You brought it up yesterday. They, yeah, they're more obsessed. boring? Yeah, they're more obsessed with ice cubes. They were more, <laughs> they were chasing melting ice and not this. And, and, and I don't understand how they can let this go. I'm interested in Grassley's letter. Uh, demanding the correspondence between uh, uh, Feinstein and, I guess, Katz. Katz, who seems to be everywhere at once. Um, and, I, and to your point about the Bar Association, I find it weird how everybody is really silent now about Avenetti. And I'm beginning to think that even the Democrats are realizing that he plays a great role in destroying the Democratic Party because if he had never entered the picture, you would have just had Ford. You would have just had one person right. and not this kind right. of crazy gang New rape New story. New, New, New Yorker. And, yeah, and I think, he's, I think he's a Republican plant, Avenetti. <laughs> well, we'll put it this I think way. He got, I think he got Cavanetti in with but, that, uh, that but false Greg, claim. I think you're 100% right. In fact, when that story first broke, the story was Democrats were saying, what is he doing? Yeah. Where is this come this from? Guys, this is not over. Don't, don't, don't spike the football in the goalposts right now, whatever that old saying is. This is not over. <laughs> I even know that one. It's end zone. It's moving, end zone. No, it's moving <laughs> the goalposts and spiking the football. I'll, I'll figure and not out spiking the punch. You guys can I'll 
spike the goal post. It's spiking the punch didn't happen. What, what does this mean overall, though, for, for the midterms? People uh, on the Democratic side, on the Republican side, they were motivated when it looked like he wasn't going to get through. Are they still going to be motivated well, if he does, losers, in fact, get through? Right. Like, are, Donna, are losers more motivated because they're angry? 32 days from now, first of all, there are many states voting. I, I was counting the, today, nine, nine states. Early voting has already started. Next week, it'll be another seven states. So people are already voting, turning in their ballots, going to the polls early, or getting absentee. This will have an impact on the midterm. I think you will find people galvanized both on the left and the right who will go to the polls, perhaps they don't vote in midterm elections, and will decide that this was the issue that galvanized them to go out and vote. It, I was going to play a little sound, but sure. do, no, go okay. Ahead. So Chuck Schumer this morning, if you could pull up that call for, talking about the Kavanaugh hearings compared to the Clarence Thomas hearings. If we have that, could we play it? The dam broke under the weight of credible allegations that Judge Kavanaugh committed a sexual assault in high school. In 2018, the Republican majority conducted a hearing that made the Anita Hill hearings in 1991 look fair by comparison. What do you think of that, Jesse? Well, listen, it's a, a bit, it's a huge difference in that story. Everybody knows the difference is there. But bottom line, Chuck lost and Mitch McConnell won. And it, it was a very huge victory for Mitch McConnell, just as big as it was for Grassley, just as big as it was for Donald Trump. Think about what happened here. You have a, a window two-year window where you have the White House, you have the Senate, and then you have the House. And the amount of stuff that this Congress and this President got done in this very small window, historic opportunity, was enormous. If you think about two Supreme Court judges, the victories on trade, on ISIS, on North Korea, on tax cuts, on pipelines, on re you know, repealing the Obamacare mandate. New NAFTA. It's just an amazing it's just sweep of the agenda for the conservative cause. And I think people respect the fact that this president did not back down, that Mitch McConnell did not back down. A lot of Republicans would have gotten a little squishy well, in this situation in the face of this hysterical Democratic and media onslaught when you, you know, you're wavering on, on the women vote as it is and, and, they, and they hung tough and, and they base it on facts and I believe they're going to be rewarded for that in the midterm. Senator Lindsey Graham says nothing has brought the Republican Party together like this has and yeah. he hasn't seen it and he's not somebody just to be a partisan maybe like a Senator Inhofe you know where they're coming from. You never know exactly where Senator Lindsey Graham's coming from. For example he's upset at the president for being nice to the North Korean leader at the same time he's fighting for the president's candidate while golfing with him on the weekends. That's why I think he's so valuable now uh, overall. A couple of things happened. In the beginning it's the Me Too movement, it's Harvey Weinstein, you don't want to be the wrong side of that, you shouldn't be. Sexual assault, serious, we understand where we should be. But they changed. It changed to, wait a second, did he do it? And this is back in high school. And what do you remember and what happens? And all of a sudden the people that said women, uh, women should get their rights and should be heard have sons, brothers, husbands, and wonder what if they, were, uh, who are female, what if women also find themselves, have a male counterpart who find themselves in trouble? Shouldn't we broaden this out a little bit? And the third thing was, and this is my unofficial poll, is a lot of people, according to people I have met and polled, <laughs> drank in high school and college, especially when the age was 18. So right. this one from Did they throw assault, ice? <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. That's when then one from, wait a second, sexual assault, dead serious, to... I had a few beers in high school, and there were a few times when I had too many in college. See, once and wait a second, it, then it got to be juvenile, and then people say, wait, so now you can't have a beer in high school and college. If you have somebody in that hallway that didn't like you, they become a star now. You know, it doesn't matter what age the sexual abuse or sexual assault occurred. It doesn't matter if you're five years old. It matters old. if it occurred. It, it, it matters, but it, it matters that people are able to describe their trauma and speak their truth. One year You ago, can treat it seriously. You can treat it seriously. You can treat it seriously. But you, should. you also should treat the accusation it is seriously a if it you're is accused. It ruins lives. Sexual assault, yes, it ruins lives, and not just in terms of public reputation, but it ruins lives in terms of people's ability to live their their life and live their truth. So look, sexual assault and sexual harassment, they're both crimes. Mm -hmm. And they were not recognized as crimes until four or five decades ago. I just want to, I wrote this Sexual down. assault? Sexual assault. Was that, was that uh, not a crime five decades ago? Sexual Attended. harassment. 
the, the yeah, guidelines. Yeah, okay, separate them, okay. The guidelines. There's two different, uh, yeah. as you know, okay. Also, one, one, years, one year ago, after the Me Too movement came about, nine members of Congress have had to resign or decline to run for re-election because of allegations of sexual assault or sexual abuse. Uh, uh, then there's been two White House uh, aides who have had to step down or left as a result of spousal abuse. Mm -hmm. And three congressional candidates have lost this session. So I just want to say but for the Donna, record, this right. is serious. Mm -hmm. We can't make light of it. And we should allow okay, people But I don't to think come anyone's forward. making light of it. I could just, if I could just finish, since you were uh, building on my point, is that of those people, they, would, they did it. So they should resign. Well, they should get out. See, Brett Kavanaugh says he wasn't there. I never met her. And I think that side had to be listened to. I, I, can, I, I, can I actually I want, say something? I want, I because no, one's, no, one's to take, be no one is treating this lightly. What, you, what you're doing, you're implicitly generalizing behavior to an entire group. You went through a series of specific examples, and you're generalizing to somebody who has as far as we know, innocent. Just because someone else did something doesn't mean this person did it. That is actually, that's called prejudice. I'm referring when you, when you to apply general, when you no. generalize behavior to, pe to people so that you take away the rights of the individual, that's actually prejudice. That's why this midterm is so important because you, we need to teach the Democratic Party a lesson that they will never forget, that you don't F with our system, you don't F with our due process, and you don't Lynch somebody based on some sterilous accusation. No, justice has no partisan ring. When Anita Not Hill, in the last three when weeks. Anita and Hill, come on, really? When Anita <laughs> Hill had to be heard, it was six Democratic women who marched on Democratic senators. It was not about partisanship. It is about justice and allowing a woman to be heard. Mm -hmm. If you want to make this a partisan well, battle, no, I'm talking about an individual. I'm not. I'm not generalizing. I'm talking about an individual. And didn't I, wasn't she Kavanaugh? Well, and also and the because leader. Because, because, what's a happening now. because a Republican president. Wanted to see a fair investigation. That was George Herbert Walker Bush. Mm -hmm. And a Democratic chair said, investigate these claims, these allegations. That is the point I'm making. I'm not generalizing. Someone who has known discrimination, experienced discrimination, do not like discrimination or mm -hmm. any form of bigotry. Neither do will I. Never. Well, so Ian Feinstein could have had a fair investigation if she had taken care of this when she could have in <laughs> August. Or what you're seeing, though, but, I, but I, I have to. She this is not about not a police board, which is also. No, and that's that why you do an FBI background check because the FBI respects confidentiality. This is not that's about a political divide. And, and was the FBI hands uh, 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 tied in this investigation? They talked this past to 11 week. alleged witnesses, and no one said anything different than what they swore already. How do we know? We haven't well, seen don't the, believe the FBI. How yeah. dare you question the FBI? I'm saying it's that an institution. No, I am, no I Democrat am, walked I out and saying, say it wasn't. I am saying no. Some Democrats. Walked out and say we and haven't said seen it. Like we it. haven't seen the whole story. I am saying that we should, as Americans, as taxpayers, we pay their salary. We should see the report. That's well, all I'm but, saying. And if you start and going down the road of seeing all FBI investigations and turns, you want to get to talk about a privacy issue. Background. Well, they I can mean, redact. I want to see your FBI investigation. I want to see yours. More on the breaking developments on Brett Kavanaugh's I'm sure the Russians and the Chinese have. talk about when the five returns. Emotions are running high on Capitol so. Hill <laughs> as protesters swarm Senator Joe Manchin after the Democrat announced he will vote yes for Brett Kavanaugh. The ambushing of lawmakers has been going on for days. Senator Orrin Hatch, another example. Don't you wave your hand at me. I wave my hand at you. When you grow up, I'll be glad. When I grow up, we grow up. Oh, I can't even hear. All right. Um, personally, That's the sound of democracy. You got to admit that it's the sound of sound democracy. Sound of a mob. I don't know. That's the <laughs> sound of democracy. Here's what, here's what I think, and this you can correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. Wouldn't their energy be better spent on voter mobilization, on turning people out, on getting people to the polls instead of just screaming at senators? Well, you can do two things at one time. They're doing both. This is a people's filibuster. I haven't been there. A people's I, filibuster. Yeah, it's okay. a people's filibuster. They are out there commanding the stage. They are speaking truth to power. Okay. 
Uh, I don't know about truth, but they're definitely powerfully loud. Um, is, this an, is this an organic movement well, just by me, people who are motivated to change America? Well, this was asked by a protester by someone over at another network, and we have some sound. Let's listen. <laughs> are you a paid professional? I work for a community organization. I work for a network of community organizations, Center for Popular Democracy, that has received funding from liberal billionaire George Soros. Records show they mention you, Anna Maria Archila, who confronted Flake as the group's co-executive director. Perhaps that is where the president is trying to draw this link? The, if, if the president wants to know whether I work for a social justice organization, the answer is yes. And I've, I've worked for a social justice organization since I was 23. All right, so perhaps not every person flooding the Capitol is a paid protester, but some high-profile ones are. And it is. But it is pretty true, Donna, that for the most part, when people are... The Democrats and Republicans are upset, but it seems like the Democrats have cornered the market on rudeness and, and Ooh, anger. Ooh, where and have you been? Did you, I, don't, I don't remember the last time... I don't remember the last time Chuck Schumer Ooh. was cornered by a group of angry Republicans. I mean, come on. I, I, I lived through not just the Obama years. Dana, I lived through the Bush years. I lived You're through so the Clinton polite. years. I lived, so polite. No, what I'm saying... Dana, the anti-war protesters during oh, yeah. that period oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, and yeah, the yeah, Clinton yeah. years. I mean, 20 years ago, I remember that, too. I, maybe I'm showing my age. I hope not. Gray still owe me something uh, out of that cup. But <laughs> let me just say this. This is democracy. This is people who are turning their rage, their anger, their but passion. Does decorum but matter? I hope does that in 32 matter? days, 32 days, well, they need, yes, civility matters. Does, and don't, well, civility matters. matters. But here's the audience, we, though, Greg. We, we, let me ask Greg a question, though, for one thing. one thing. So there's two matters. audiences here. There's the senators who are getting attacked and getting well, people in their fine. face. And then there's people on television that are watching it. How do you think that plays? Can I throw to some piece of tape? Sure. That I, uh -oh. this, is a, this is my this favorite part. This has never part. been done before. This is my favorite part of the protest. Can we roll this? Voting on closure. In 30 minutes. Meet me to the left. Meet me to the left. If you would like to go to an office, if you would like to go to an office, to spend time, to spend time with your senator, with your senator, summon to vote. And to summon to vote. Let's go watch the vote. Let's go watch the vote. In offices that you wish to communicate with. In offices that you wish to communicate with. I am going to go to Heidi Heitkamp's office. I am going to go to Heidi Heitkamp's office. Why? She's on our side. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. That is one of the, one of the wow. funniest things I've ever seen. But you have to understand, it's also kind of chilling. It's chilling to it me yeah. to see a mob in action. That to me is not democracy. That's robotics. Yeah. Um, and, what, and, and so what I see mm. is I don't see a political divide. I don't see right versus left. What I see is a fear of the general population in facing a small mob of intimidating activists who seek to subvert our institutions. People don't want to get involved, don't want to be yelled at. So when they see a group coming after them, they, they freak out. That's what they're counting on. This is an, uh, uh, this is an intimidating machine. It's no. a small group. And so then you see, right. the, but then you see the media no. coverage of this. I love the media coverage. You got to right. hear it. They, they go, oh, let's look at these activists, right. young, old men, women. No, they're not. <laughs> they're the same type of people. They're elitist, overeducated, overcaffeinated, white majority leftist who ha who only think one thought and that is to destroy the system they, they are organizers and that's how that's you true. organize people. by repeating <laughs> that is basis from scary. the heart. it comes from the heart i'm sorry but that is called civic education uh, that's called that, the zombie that apocalypse is, that, is, that is called civic education look every time i've coordinated a town hall meeting in my life including for a republican mm -hmm. new gingrich when did this start after he what, you did the, the that this robotic thing. When did that start? Well, this this has been part of organizing for the that for the history. When you, I've never you seen no it. no you inform people. You go here to do this. You go there to do this. But why do they have to right. repeat it like robots? Right, let me ask you, Dana, let me ask you a question. So, so do you give people instructions? Flake was one guy. So Flake got confronted by the woman who we just saw in the elevator, and a lot of people on the left believe that that was very productive. I believe that it was a one-off. I believe that was a one-off, and I don't think if you do that to any other Republican uh, senator, they're going to flip at all. However, as mad as people were, at, as mad as some Republicans were at Flake last Friday, this Friday you could argue that what Flake did by insisting on an F supplemental FBI investigation I agree. actually led to the moment that Susan trick. Collins <laughs> and Manchin and Flake could say yes. It gave him and cover. So, you know, hindsight 
is 50 /50. It was a respectful thing right. to do in the Actually, right thing to do. Actually, 2020, but it's right. a funny Senator thing. Senator Flynn, what do you want to go out? All right, listen, we got to run. The media's latest attack on Brett Kavanaugh. More, more attacks next. No, my friend said that. I'm a little scared for this block, you just by be. the way we entered. The media's <laughs> attacks on Brett Kavanaugh continue to get more desperate with this latest hit piece from The New Yorker. It chastises the Supreme Court nominee, forget this, crying. Quote, he scrunched up his nose and dug his tongue into his bottom lip as he was deposed in an embattled bid to save his Supreme Court nomination. If he would get to don his black robe, he'd do it weepily. So he seemingly weaponized crying the way a little boy does when he's in trouble. So because he cried, Greg, he's less of a man. Well, you and know, he's being mocked. We were told that it's sexist to say boys don't cry. Uh, because it implies that only women cry, and that that's and that's an example of misogyny. So while you're knocking a dude, which is misandry, you're actually being misogynist by saying that, hey, if it was a girl, it'd be okay. I'd love to see how that writer would handle the public shaming and humiliation before millions or before his family. How that writer would uh, would be able to endure that? Every, everybody gets a pass. It doesn't how you handle it. You get a pass because most people don't go through that. Kind right. of hell. And, I'm talking, and by the way, also, 10 days his life felt. His emotions, his emotions were due, in fact, not, not, not about the Ford accusation, but it, what was happening afterwards, what was raining down on him with the gang rape stuff and watching this happen before his eyes and his family's eyes. He had every right to be emotional. In fact, if I, I, I don't know how he didn't get up from that table and right. punch a few people. Right. He was very angry. Well, that, uh, that, that would have gotten him in a lot of trouble. Look, <laughs> yes, when, I know. When, when, when Edmund <laughs> That's Musk, why I'm not on the when court. Ed, <laughs> you should not don the black robe. Uh, I have one at home, though. Oh, <laughs> don't. Star. It's a shorty. Uh, okay. <laughs> Edmund Muskie, when he cried in 1972, yeah. I mean, people said it would set men back. When Pat Schroeder cried. Well, he lost his candidacy. Um, that's right. When Pat Schroeder cried, when she decided that she wasn't going to continue to pursue it, they said, don't cry because girls should not cry in public because it shows you're weak. Look, Reagan cried whenever he saw the American flag, and people thought that yeah. was a sense of strength. George Herbert well, Walker. Well, Bush. 41 and 43 are big cries. Wait, wait, how about yeah. Boehner? Remember yeah. that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting to Mr. Boehner. Oh, you're getting to him? Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, look, I don't, I don't think crying for women or men should be seen as any sign of some kind of instability, but. We've, we've treated women differently when it right. comes to the range of emotions that we're able to use but, in public. I raised my voice today because you raised your voice. Mm -hmm. and I said, oh, hell, I can raise my voice. Right. Don't, don't worry, I won't sound like Aretha after dark. Right. But, <laughs> but the truth is, is that when, when the justice, he did appear, he was very indignant, he was very angry. But now I think what people are questioning was his temperament. You know, is this the, the judge cabinet well, no, that we might focus, see on the but, court? But that's why the temperament one well, thing, but they were talking about crying. Dana, he's a human being. Just uh, Dana, like that. there was a time, and they say in this article that Ernest Hemingway, John Wayne, John Ford, they were tough men. They would never cry. It shows how America's right. changed, and uh, we're not ready to see a man we should cry. Just, I mean, like, we should, uh, how did that turn out for Hemingway in the long run, right? Well, but can we the whole thing can about telling men that it's okay to cry was that so that you wouldn't get yourself into a terrible situation later on in life with depression and all the rest and that repressed anger and that's pretty rich for the New Yorker to, to write this And can women piece. become angry? And also angry. the reason, yeah. remember back to his testimony, what, when his voice broke and when he started to cry, it was when he said, because of all of this, I may never be able to teach again. I may never be coach. able to coach again. They were taking away from him based on a false accusation all the things that he cared about in his life. And he has two daughters, he's a son, he's um, a husband. And I also will say this, when he's on the court, I think everyone should be rest assured that he will have a very soft spot for people who come to the court who say they were falsely accused. And you probably thought that before anyway, uh, because True. you know him. Uh, Jesse, they go on to this article to talk about how you cry makes a difference. They thought they <laughs> uh, Brainer <laughs> cried with a sweet, in a sweet way, mm -hmm. and that, that he seemed to cry in an awkward way. Oh, does it matter how you cry? It does. Um, I think Banner cried in a humiliating way, so the Democrats thought that was funny because they mocked him for it. Th no, these we were real not. tears. These were not crocodile tears. Anybody that watched that testimony yes, knows that that was too. real and raw emotion. And the Democrats don't like the fact that he cried because that emotion propelled him through that testimony and really rallied some wavering senators to his side because they saw a man who was indignant about being accused of something he swore he didn't do. But also, let's bring up another guy. You brought up a, a lot of people. Great musky reference, by the <laughs> way. How about crying Chuck? 
Does, does the Democrats of the New Yorker write anything about crying? Chuck? They did Hillary not Clinton cry. cried, remember, in 2008 in New Hampshire, and then she ended up winning that primary because right. of those tears. But the word is that President Trump does not like when a man cries and wasn't pleased no. with the crying. No. Oh, really? Yeah. President Trump likes Oops, to I make others he said cry. It was Dr. Christine Ford he said it was, was compelling, composed, but at the same time wasn't comfortable was compelling with this crying. Incredible. Well, he bared his soul. Right. And he looks like he's in, although Donna says... No, Donna just referred to him as a justice, not a judge. Oh, oh let's look so back at that tape. Justice. All right, yeah, I'm going to tease really in order to preserve the length of the next block. And Thank you. the control room Shut up, Brian. Brian. Get the fan mail. <laughs> shut up, Brian. That's nice talk. <laughs> don't let's shut get the fan mail. Because you him. just stole don't my cry, tease. Brian. Yeah. Now I got nothing to say. Question my don't temperament. Don't yeah. don't yeah. don't Gregorian chants yeah, what there. Was that? Did you request <laughs> that? Yes. Oh, better than Gregorian now. Time to confess. <laughs> yes, Fan Mail Friday. We're answering your questions. The first question from Joe T. The great question. What's your best scar story? And Dana, you grew up on a farm, so you must have scars. Uh, no, actually, um, this is be a callback. Uh huh. Uh, the scar that I have is from when I fell off the three wheeler <laughs> <laughs> with Troy. <laughs> <laughs> so you, Troy was the boy you had a crush on. No, that's not <laughs> how it worked. I just happened to ride a three-wheeler, and then when he said to hold on, I didn't want him to think I liked him, so when he turned right, right. I fell off, and it re rolled over my, broke my ankle, and I have a scar on my toe. Wow. wow. Was the Troy, only... Troy has left a mark on you. Right. Brian, do you have a scar? Yes. Uh, sure. I had an exploding vein in my calf, Ooh. and oh. I took it out through my groin. Wow. Oh, my hey. God. Oh, oh. oh. Let's, let's just hey. stop. So I have two scars. Oh. Donna, please. My, 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 my right to This is not Fox it and was, Friends. It was <laughs> Easter Sunday. My grandmother made my dress, and it had one of these long ribbons behind, and I was playing with Baby Jack. We were sitting on an escalator, Ooh. and I forgot to, you know, yeah. tuck it under, and guess what? Mm. <laughs> wow. Whoa. That's for <laughs> Jesse. I've told this story before. Remember Black Friday oh, yeah. after drinking on Thanksgiving? I stood up from the toilet and smashed my head on the mirror from the medicine cabinet and then lied and told everybody I got into a fight fighting over a TV on Black Friday. <laughs> <laughs> and now you confessed again. Yeah. My scar is I got hit with a lunch pail oh, yeah. by Bobby Keller in second grade. Wow. Was it second grade Ooh. or transitional? I can't remember Ouch. what year it was. But yeah, but he threw it on a fly and hit me in the head. So Wait, I, I got to give him credit for that. that. Did you go, yeah. <laughs> Did Bobby, you go down? Bobby Kennel, that's his okay. name. If you're watching, Bobby, still haven't forgotten. I remember Baby Jack. Uh, yeah, you never forget your first scar. All right. <laughs> J.D. Peterson asks, and this is good too, if you could write a book for another co-host, what would be the title of the book and what would it be about? I would just go with the title of the book. But anyway, how about you, Brian, if you could write a book about somebody? Well, well thanks for the lead time. If yes. I could write a book about someone? <laughs> a co-host. Yeah. Uh, anywhere in the FNC? For, wait, for him or her? It would or be, no, if, here's my book. Yeah, ghostwrite. Oh. Donna Brazil. Mm. Even nicer than you think. Oh. Oh, wow. Oh. Greg, baby, don't cry. Oh. oh. Jesse? I mean, doesn't everybody ghostwrite their books here at Fox? <laughs> <laughs> No, you're looking at the wrong guy. Oh, that's right. That's right. Uh, something about the pirates or a monologue. I don't know. Or a dog. Who uh, cares? You're not even, hey, you're, you're you're not even bothering even to come up with the title. Yeah. What is Dana? that about? I would, I would write one for Jesse called um, The Ten Best Books I Ever Read. Oh. <laughs> that's going to be a short book. Yeah. I would say I have a type Born to be Wild. The life and times of Lou Dobbs. Oh, yeah, because nice. you guys don't know. That sounds like a guy that got the questions sell. ahead of time. You know, That's you know. Sell. All right. Oh, this is a good question from Danny L. What do you miss the most about your hometowns where you grew up? That's assuming that we've moved away. Donna, what do you miss about your hometown? Oh, I love New Orleans, and I miss a good gumbo. I could have a bowl tonight. Mm. Mm. I miss the cheesesteaks in Philly. Yeah. Can't get them up here. Yeah, you can. Not good ones. Yeah, just call an Uber. <laughs> Dana? Ranch air. Ooh. Like, yeah. Even the smell. Is that some kind of euphemism? <laughs> Smells like ranch air up here. <laughs> yeah, that's the cow. Cow got inside again. <laughs> the cow, you know, they can't go downstairs. The cow. No. I don't know where that came from, Brian. Uh, sadly, I live in my hometown. 
so I don't miss anything. <laughs> oh, <laughs> if you I never that, I walk down the block. You, you never miss. A moved. lack of personal growth. I, there's really oh. nobody else that will take me. All right, what about the era? You grew up in the, what, the 40s? So, <laughs> so sometime in your hometown? I, I, grew, I was in my prime in the 70s. That's yeah. when I was my youthful indiscretions. And the 80s, which will ultimately upend my career, as we found out mm -hmm. recently. And now I'm, <laughs> I'm in the zenith of my life. But in the same town. I think this it's a wonderful story. This is the zenith. <laughs> it's <Yeah>. trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I miss malls. I yeah. grew up in the 70s. Oh. Sh shopping malls were where you I went. Have a the Hillsdale Mall in San Mateo. Tan Fran in, uh, where's Tan Fran? San Jose? Uh, uh, Eastridge in San Jose. Rolling all the Gang. great malls. Spencer Rolling Gam. Gam. Spencer, oh, of course. That's where you got all the gag gifts. Great. And then, like, the, the, well, I won't get into the ice cubes. I love um, Tease. Okay, uh, one more thing. <laughs> Up next. to repeat what the producer said. Now for one more thing, Jesse. All right, Greg, zombie protesters were so interesting, I decided to add to the conversation. Here's one radical left winger. Just listen to this one. That's the um, I don't know what kind of, is that a mating call in the wild kingdom? I do not know what that is, but apparently that's what they do. Right, Donna? You guys train them to do that. Community well, organizing know, I, I, one. I, I was, you know. How I, to scream like a bitch. I, I, I know people are asking Rihanna to, you know, make <laughs> new music, but I don't think that's in Rihanna's cards no. to make that song. No. But All you right. know what? That, nice was that was a howl. That was a howl. It is my good. turn, and I have got a treat for Yay. everyone, okay? And it's actually called Whitney's Magical Treats. These are cookies. You're not going to believe these. This is, uh, you go to Whitney's Magical Treats.com. It's out of Texas. Ooh. Um, this is the daughter-in-law of Are they magical because Carl I think they have something Rose. in them? Oh. Look, at she made them. It has the five and Fox News. Fox oh, News. Wow. The five and Fox News. Okay, there you go. There you See go. how right. cute they are? There and then go. if you go to Whitney'sMagicalTreats.com, you can check out all Ooh. of the creations. And then it comes in this handy-dandy tin, and they're all individually wrapped, so it's a great idea for a gift. Oh, wow. And Carl Rove is very proud of his daughter-in-law, Whitney. Fantastic. Thank you, Whitney. I am. I'm actually going to take okay. them home with me. I'm going to order up some oh, water tomorrow. Well, I am going to be on TV. Yes. Uh, I never promote anything, but I'm going to be on with Bill Hemmer tomorrow from 12 to 3. Then there, we're going to have con special Continuous coverage all day long. You yes. never promote anything, ever. But ever. not usually on Fridays. Ever. Greg, <laughs> Greg is going to do that now. All right, uh, Saturday, live, 10 o'clock. Oh, what a great show. We got Emily Campagna. We got Tom Shalou, Kat Tim, Tyrus. We're going to talk about everything, every single thing in the universe, and then some. A live 24 hour show. Wow. No, it's only an hour. Anyway, it's time for this. Greg's last day on the beach news. You know, this is probably the last weekend you could be to the beach. Do what I did last week. Check me out here in uh, New Jersey on the shore. Nothing like getting buried alive in the beach. Look at this dog. Look nice. how happy this That's dog is. That's a Boston is. Terrier. It, good job, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look at him. I'll the happiest him. dog in the world. Doesn't yeah. mind being buried. Like just, just a film. Yes. It's, nice, it's nice and warm. Yeah, it is. Oh, awesome. oh, he's like, oh, that's Isn't that great. Man. All right, that, we've seen enough of the dog. Look Brian. Fun, Brian. I have to salute somebody I've never wanted to salute, but I always respect. Tom Brady, what he did uh, last night is unbelievable. This guy's 41 years old. In four day, in three days rest, he went out and not only did he lead his Patriots to victory, he threw his 500th touchdown pass to his 71st different wide receiver. By far the greatest pl player, and it's hard for me as a Giant fan and a Jet supporter Just to great. say this ever. Here's Tom Brady. And there you go. Josh Gordon did it, and he brought his team back. They thought this was the year they were going to bust up, but now they're back and playing well. You're a New York fan, and, and you're doing your one more thing on Tom Brady? I have to What's respect with him. You? I've never seen anything like it. I've never well, seen anything. Joe like Montana, better player. Wait till the Broncos get going. He had been going. retired three years by then. Well, Drew Brees. Why are you laughing he about broke, the Broncos? He broke two records a couple <laughs> right. of weeks ago. But now the important moment. Oh, Donna I have a new book out along with my great friends, Mignon Moore, Leah Daughtry, and Yolanda Carraway. It came out this week. It's called For Color Girls Who Consider Politics. It's a journey of uh, three, former, four women who have worked in politics for the last 30 years. We talk about our work not only at the Democratic National Committee. Leah was the convention uh, CEO for two historic conventions. And, of course, Yolanda uh, Carraway has been a major political strategist in the Democratic Party. And my friend Mignon Moore worked in both Clinton campaigns. So great book, great reading. And Absolutely. just remember, 
This is a book. This book is a page turner, mm -hmm. and you don't. Oh. Is it salacious? <laughs> <laughs> Not like the last one. Wait, Greg, do we have one more question? <laughs> if you were on a billboard, what would it say and what would it be for, Jesse? Say it again? If you were on a billboard, what would it say and what would it be for? Uh, not Ooh. Nike, uh, probably um, Just yeah, Waters it. World. I'm Waters and this is my world. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that would yeah. be it. That would That's be good, it. Dana. I think I would probably have Dana's Book Club mm. coming to you soon somewhere on Fox Nation. I will remind people Tuesday, November 6th is election day. Mm -hmm. Go vote. Election has consequences. Oh, exactly. Oh, right. wait. Oh, Brian, I'm sorry. I have to go. That's it for us. We're going to see you back <laughs> here. Not on the billboard. Monday's special report is up next. Unbelievable. Very special show, Chris.